Hey everyone, it's Nigel Jenkins of Laughing Heart Music and LHM Records, and today my guest is Dana Beeler. Dana is the Director of Operations at CKDU Campus Radio Station in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and a member of the Board of Directors at Music Nova Scotia, along with being an independent artist. Uh, so she wears a lot of different hats. We had a chat about how to pitch your music to campus radio, her participation in the Key Change Initiative, how to brand yourself properly as an artist, and so much more. I uh, hope you enjoy the conversation. It was a great one. Thank you so much to Music NL, to the province of NL, and to COA for sponsoring this video series. And if you like the video, please subscribe and share it. All right. Thanks so much. Cool. So, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff I want to talk about with you today, but first of all, congrats on getting nominated to the, or elected to the uh, Music Nova Scotia Board of Directors. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so you left your job there and now you're on the board right back in the mix. Yeah, I'm the second vice president of Music Nova Scotia Oh, congrats. Scotia board. I, uh, I hadn't uh, kept up with the other positions that got elected. That's awesome. Yeah, it's funny. It's No, it's cool. I'm, I feel like it's a good... Um, it's a good thing. I feel like it's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a good thing. I mean, part of what I want to talk with you about today is the fact that you're an independent artist and you're working with CKDU and now you're on the board of Music Nova Scotia and you're taking part in the Key Change Initiative stuff that's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, do you sleep ever? Actually, a lot right now, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. I go to bed at 9.30, I wake up at 7, it's beautiful. Yeah, we were just talking about the meal prep. That's, uh, yeah. sounds like you're living the healthy life. Well, you know, there's a, <laughs> I don't think I was very healthy for a long time, so. Well, hey, you're doing the right things now. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Oh my God, that's so embarrassing. <laughs> oh, it's because it's one of my uh, one of my important contacts. I have it oh. on Do Not Disturb, but my important contacts can call through. So, like, mom, mom can oh, get through okay. while we're doing nice. this. <laughs> That's uh, yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about the new role at CKDU? That's kind of like the, I, I assume, the most time consuming, biggest jobby job you've got on the go right now. Yeah, I mean, with. Every everything that's going on, the coronavirus situation, yeah. I am, there's, uh, yeah, I like, there's no events and I'm not really focusing on, um, this year as a, as an artist. Uh, so, right. um, I, I mean, that's wrong. I'm always like doing artsy things, but I'm yeah. just like not thinking, uh, for like another 16 months or something for that. But anyways, right. um, yeah, CKDU is good. You know, I like kind of applied for this job on a whim because I um, was just like, I was like, I should probably apply for other jobs just because I haven't <laughs> applied for a job in four years and I probably should. I, I, uh, I do that occasionally too, just field my resume out. Not that I ever want a job really, but yeah, like, I want to know I'm employable. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, everything kind of, you know, I got the interview the same week that Music Nova Scotia let me go. So that was kind of interesting. Right. And that was also like, week four of uh lockdown for us so i was like oh shit i may not have i may not be employed uh that would be really sad and awful for me <laughs> um but yeah no it was all good and i got the job and it's been two months now um it's definitely like a big learning curve for me i have to deal with a lot of different uh, types of people and a lot of different types of um, issues that I haven't had to deal with before. <laughs> um, but it's really great and like they have a really strong community of people that I that know a lot more than I do about the radio here specifically like campus and community radio. Um, but they're like they have like a MIA basically but it's the National Campus and Community Radio Association. Um, and that the NCRA is wonderful. Like I've never dealt with a MIA that is as involved and engaged as 
the NCRA is right. for campus and community radio. So they like feel pretty lucky to have that uh, resource. I'm pretty sure I emailed the the ED of that like 40 times in my first week, just being like, I don't understand what's happening. Help. <laughs> and he was like, sure. How's it going? I'm like, holy shit. Cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's good. Uh, are they are they based in Ottawa? I know there's like a big national campus so. radio event that happens in Ottawa every year. I think that Shanna Lauren has been a part of. Yeah, so they do the national conference uh, in different places in Canada now. Okay, I don't right know on. if they always have done that, but um, I think they are based in Ottawa, though. Yeah, so this is like your second member-run organization that you're working for. What are some of the challenges of working in like a member based uh, environment <laughs> members <laughs> no i'm kidding wow well, hey yeah <laughs> people no it's like you're it's customer service all of the time mm -hmm. like you are it's a volunteer run member-based organization you are at the whim of what the membership wants yeah. and as someone who is a uh, in a position of like power, quote unquote power, mm -hmm. um, in the organization, it's like your job to take that in and like harness it and be like, okay, these are the things that we can actually do based on the budget that we have, based on like the requirements that we need to be met and based on what you want. Um, right. And then just sort of like making sure that you're proposing things to people in the right way is how I how I have dealt with it for the last couple of years and I'm trying to do with CKDU. Um, but yeah, you know, you can't always please everybody and you like have to not take it personally, which I have a hard time with, but I, I'll get, I'll get better at it or I won't. And that's just who I am. <laughs> I still take everything personally. And like I'm 32 now. So that's just how it is. <laughs> yeah. <exactly. laughs> uh, when you say proposing things the right way, is that, do you mean in terms of like being careful about the kinds of language you're using or like framing things in the right sort of context? Yeah, just sort of because like I have to ultimately take any like membership requests that I receive to the board and right. the board has to okay everything and there's like a couple different ways to work with a board and the way that I find works the best and I feel like I learned this um, from Tamara Cater at, uh, you know, Kaya Cater. Yeah, of course. So her manager, um, yeah, no, Tamara, Tamara too. Yeah. Yeah. So I've worked with her, like I worked for her, I don't know, six or seven years ago in, um, in Toronto as, um, just like an all around person. Anyways, one of the, like the tips she gave me about like board governance was like, have the idea, per, like write it out properly and give it to the board and be like, this is what we should do. And they're probably going to say yes, because like there's very few opportunities where or very few times where a board would be like no like we have a completely different idea they're probably on the same page yeah. they just like want to be a part of the process um so yeah generally people are like happy if you come to them and say i have a plan and i know how to execute it and i think that it'll go well and they're like okay great or they're gonna ask you some questions and ideally if you're prepared you have the answers to those questions right so, That's yeah a, it's interesting i mean to me you're someone who like has a lot of vision as far as i've seen in like your your artist project um how do you i mean i guess you're, you're only new in the role but how do you find balancing sort of your own vision for what you're doing at ckdu with like the requests that you're getting and the ideas that you're getting from members mm. yeah i don't know how to answer that question um, <laughs> no i think that like it's gonna take more time mm. obviously i'm like new and people have to learn to trust me um and trust that i know what I say I know or I understand the role or I understand what I'm supposed to be doing um and so yeah I feel like that that part of things may take a little more time but honestly like the board's been super great about all the like recommendations that I've had um for them so far yeah. and uh I yeah I don't know I haven't really been met with a lot of resistance on it. I think I come at it pretty like holistically, maybe. Um, cool. Yeah. 
Yeah. Cool. Well, I mean, let's let's maybe jump into the like artist part of the vision thing, bit mm -hmm. that I wanted to talk with you about. I mean, one thing that I really love about what you've done with Hello Delaware is you've had such a consistent aesthetic and vibe and you've presented the project so well. Uh, how did you come up with all that for the band? The marketing, the branding, everything? <laughs> um, if I go back five years, I... You know, I think, like, I took a lot of, like, the marketing and branding stuff because I had, like, this personal brand. Um, right. Whether it was a brand that I gave myself or if it was a brand that other people gave me, I don't know if I'm 100% sure, but <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, I think that, like, I just wanted to... Um, I just, like wanted to portray what what I was doing as like a young feminist woman trying to like talk about my feelings in a way that I felt was helpful to my like brain and also helpful to like good like songwriting wise right. that's not yeah. a very good sentence but anyways <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. I've, I've, this is my fourth or fifth one of these i've done now and i've had a lot of bad <laughs> sentences it's like okay. think you're eloquent until you yeah. record yourself talking for an hour <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um yeah so i basically you know we started out kind of uh it's, I don't know, I feel really dumb about, I feel really dumb about my, like, past stuff, but um, we started out, we were kind of like, I was like an angry girl singing about, like, boys who broke my heart kind of thing, yeah. um, and I, you know, that was pretty easy to sell, it was like, okay, well, what can I put on a t-shirt that is funny and um, relates to what I'm doing, like, the very first thing I ever did was tour across the country by myself and I like yeah. made the solo YOLO like hashtag right and it was like whatever what is YOLO you only live once yeah uh, <laughs> what, what is YOLO you have the hashtag you <laughs> yeah. tell me what YOLO means um like I mean that was in 2016 no okay. 2013 yeah it was 23 24 um yeah, so that was 2013, and I basically, like, I made a couple t-shirts that had, like, a little hashtag solo YOLO on it. I, like, did my whole tour with that hashtag and, like, traveled across the country and took photos and, like, built up my Instagram following based on that. And then other people would send me their pictures, and, like, it was an opportunity for other, like, sing single women, based pretty much, at the yeah. time to kind of, like, commiserate with me right. about their, you know, or, like not even commiserate but just like be like share our experience either like good or bad experiences in being <laughs> a single person in the world yeah, yeah yeah and um that kind of like that painted my solo career for a while and then painted like my us as a band um mm. i think as well and yeah, I mean, I, I definitely ran with that. I did a lot of, like, t-shirts that it morphed more into, like, a, a feminist thing more than being a single person because I was in a relationship and was pretty happy and I'm now <laughs> in a relationship and I'm pretty happy. So it's kind of it's difficult to act like you're cranky about being single when you're not. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, that's right. It's got to be true to who you are. Yeah, and I think that's definitely something that, like, I'm – dealing with now is the like maturing like of the band and our image and um the songwriting and stuff like that so right. I'm kind of glad that we have all this time right now to do that because it definitely has given me a moment to like breathe and be like okay what do I actually want to talk about and how do I actually want to like portray myself to the world um yeah, I feel like I rambled a lot there and I lost, maybe I lost the point. No, that's okay. I like where you, okay. where, I like where we landed here. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so is that, have you been doing a lot of that sort of reflective kind of work now that it's been a little less busy on, on the live performance front? I was just thinking about, you know, you mentioned the Music Nova Scotia thing and the CKDU thing all happening at the same time. And I know you had like the Know It's Fine tour 
Mm. Or not sorry. This is fine. This is fine. I'm yeah. confusing. This is fine with, with the band. Another, with the band. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to No, it's fine. Yeah, they're um, great. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like that happened at the start of the pandemic too. Um, mm -hmm. So is that what you've transitioned to? Is more like, yeah, reflective sort of activities, like songwriting core stuff? Yeah, I mean, I started to do, um, for the first time ever, I did like a creativity book thing, the like artist way is what it's called. Cool. And I got about five weeks into that and realized that it was not necessarily for me. I think it's more for people who like were told that they shouldn't be creative and that's never been really my right my like that's never been my experience um but i yeah so i kind of stopped doing that <laughs> not a that's, good experience <laughs> good right now. Um, well who, that's interesting who encouraged you in music early on then if that wasn't your experience if you were encouraged to be creative who were those encouraging voices early on oh uh, well i mean i played in a family band um from the time i was 14 uh yeah. until i was 20 um and like we played music all the time it wasn't like it took a long time for my parents and my family to kind of like recognize that I could make money uh right. doing music and like working in the music industry so that was definitely something that took a while it's not like they were like go out and be creative and you'll be fine everything's great they were very <laughs> much like you need to have a job because you decided to move out at 18 for some reason and <laughs> you need to have a job. Um, yeah. If you don't have a job, you won't be able to pay for things. And I figured that out fairly quickly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> still did a lot of really dumb stuff, but yeah, they were always supportive of what I was doing. Yeah. Um, they just obviously like worried because they wanted to make sure I had money and could eat and, uh, wasn't gonna like die in a ditch <laughs> somewhere <laughs> <laughs> which I appreciate you know I think some people don't have that so yeah I, I do appreciate that a lot um yeah yeah so yeah I don't know like the creativity side has never really been I think I've been like my bi biggest I'm, I've been my biggest critic and like biggest like wall for creativity for sure I'm the person who is always like no this isn't good enough or like no right. I we can't do it this way or whatever um which is definitely something that I need to figure out and work work yeah through. <laughs> how does that how does that show up like how how are you oh, you know you say you're a wall for yourself how are you like how do you, how are you getting in your own way in that process, and how do you then get out of your way when you acknowledge that that's what's happening? Um, I mean, I think I'm still like specifically right now. I mm -hmm. feel like I am very much in my own way. I and I have a feeling that it's like very much because, and I think maybe I said this to you when we talked before, but like. I just, I'm just like mad at the world right now mm. for, I had a full year that was going to be like, I was so excited for this year. We were yeah. going to tour and put out our record and put out music and finally like do all the things that I wanted to do. Um, and it kind of felt like the last four years had really been leading up to this point and it all just stopped. And yeah. I think I am just mad about it and there's nothing that like it's dumb to be mad about that and it's like just there's nothing i can do there's nothing i can like change about the situation yeah. except for my attitude towards it so i just need more time with <laughs> with not um not thinking about what i could have done so that right. i can start thinking about what i'm going to do yeah um yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's okay to be angry at what has <laughs> happened because it really sucks. And even if it, everything sort of clears up and gets okay from here out, it's like people who had plans yeah. March, March to June, it's like, those are all 
they're scrapped and they're pushed at least what a year yeah ahead maybe two years if you want to like build it back up the right way yeah um and to think that you've you know you've lost a year or two of you know momentum and doing the thing that you yeah. love and and you re and you couldn't have done anything out of about it it was totally out of your control i don't know it's it's frustrating it's very frustrating you know i mean it could always be worse of course i just like it's like a big old sucker punch to my stomach most of the right. time <laughs> like that's how it feels that's how it felt i had a really hard time at the beginning of this and like i don't think i handled it very well because i don't handle when things don't go my way very well like i i'm a pretty like type a personality right. i plan things and i generally plan things um i'm like okay we're doing this or we're doing this it's not like we're doing this or we're not doing it so when we're not doing it i'm just sort of like i don't know what to do <laughs> is that do you think that's because like you don't fail much you, uh, you to me you're someone who's like i'm i'm gonna do this and it happens and i'm gonna do this <laughs> and, it, and it happens well i mean in terms of the the, the positions that you've yeah been able to find yourself in it's like to be a part of all the different organizations and initiatives and to have a band that's done all the things that you've done it's like is, is that the issue that you just don't, you know, fail in that fail. much? So it's, you don't um, know the how to deal with the taste of it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is like something that I tell people that I think maybe I like came to realize after like therapy was like, I don't like being embarrassed and mm. I don't like failing. Like, yeah, that's why I don't like dance in public. I'm not like goofy right. around people. I don't know. Like I'm a pretty, um, serious person because I don't like being embarrassed and I don't and, I, and which I guess is the same as like failing um I don't know if I don't fail I just like don't talk about my failures or I don't talk about the things that I apply for that I don't get right the general public um <laughs> because I like I don't know I like to keep some things to myself maybe I should talk more about failing I think that it's fine do I think it's fine to fail? I don't think it's fine to fail, actually. <laughs> For me, personally. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's awful. No, I, I, know it's yeah, like, I understand. You're supposed to, you're, sub, I don't know. I mess I, up all of the time. Mm. I'm like, I'm definitely not a perfect person. I just like, don't, I like to handle that stuff internally more than externally, which right. is just me. Maybe that's too much information about myself. <laughs> No, I mean, I think how how you deal with failure is important, especially in music, because it's like you're just getting no's all the time, or at least yeah. I am. Yeah. I, you know, I've received several no's this week. Is it Tuesday? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I, I, yeah, I think that's like, I, I found that really challenging in the first couple of years, because I'm also a type A person, and I've generally <laughs> been good at the things I've tried to do. And then I got into this, and it's like, I didn't know the landscape. I didn't know the players. I didn't really know what you were supposed to do, how to conduct myself. And I was just messing up all over the place. Yeah. I also don't like to be embarrassed. I do dance goofy, uh, <laughs> mostly privately, I guess, though, for my yeah. wife at home in the living room. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, I guess it's something that you you get better at your your skin thickens up and you just yeah. get used to like being told no and having to try 10 15 100 different ways to get to the yes i'm thinking about like grant funding specifically because you just got some grant results back and yeah. some were approved and some were not and yeah 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 i mean i don't get I don't get a lot of the grants that I apply for, um, but we have been quite lucky in the last couple of years. But I also think that like, I don't know. I, I just feel like we were doing, we were in the right place at the right time. And like, we were trying really hard to do a bunch of things. So like people saw that and they, I don't know, gave us money, but like, I've never gotten a JSR. I've applied 15 times, I'm sure. Wow. <laughs> and like, <laughs> I applied every, 
every time that you possibly could apply, I've applied for a JSR for every project I've ever done and I've never gotten one. And it's like, you're off by, it's like slowly going up incrementally. Going right. up. I'm like, okay, so we're getting better, but it's going up by like 0.2%. <laughs> and it's off by like 20, like 0.2% basically. Yeah. Like yeah. Whatever. 1% or something. And you're just like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> I, with the juried sound recording stuff every time i've had it approved a couple of times for artists that i work with but mm -hmm. it's never been on the first application yeah it's there always is. been it's always been like this is not good enough the first time and then you make it better and yeah, yeah. i mean uh, like i also started applying for funding when i like 10 years ago now right so it, i've been doing this for a long time it was maybe early for jsr when you started <laughs> yeah absolutely i mean like it was dumb and i don't even think that they had like the depth they had like a different factor system when i was doing right. it too so it was like i don't even know what was happening but like even with music nova scotia stuff i really didn't get, start getting funding until um until like hello delaware started and we actually like were doing things and people were like oh, okay she she's not going away so if if i remember correctly you were at like a conference right and somebody told you like you should have a band name, not a mm -hmm. not use your own name. What was that all about, and why why did you decide to take that advice? Yeah, so um, we played Nova Scotia Music Week in 2014, 2015. Yeah, uh, and that was our like first gig. That was the first gig as like a band. I was very excited. We like I had this new record. Um, it was really cool. We were playing upstairs at the the rudder. I don't know something in the rudder, the rudder. that sounds like a venue in somewhere Yarmouth. in sydney yeah oh Yarmouth. Yeah, okay. Yarmouth. yeah um and i don't know it was great we we played this show it was really awesome i felt so good about it and then at the end these like people came over and talked to me um and evan newman i think he was like the only delegate i was like i really want to talk to this guy like i sent him an email i sent him our record and he was like, cool, like, I'll come see you play. And then I didn't see him after the show. And then I had a meeting with him the next day. And he, like, sat down. He was just like, you know, I came to see you. And you guys were, like, a really, like, great rock band. And I was like, well, thanks. He's just like, I just, like, thought that you were going to be some country folky singer because it was Dana Beeler. And I was like, okay, you're right. Like, <laughs> yeah, you're right. This is, yeah, okay. So that kind of started that. And then I think I spent six months, like, writing out different names um there was like a whole thing in my head where i was like well i could pretend this could be my alter ego and i could pretend to be this other person on stage and yeah that would really help me be more confident on stage because i really wasn't super confident on stage um at the time and yeah anyway so a bunch of like notes in my phone later and i came up with hello delaware and i said it to a few people and they were like yeah, that's cool. I like that. I think like the first person I said it to was Kim Harris and she was like, yeah, cool. that's the one. I was like, okay, <laughs> cool. <laughs> Don't need to see the other options. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> so, I, yeah. uh, You mentioned the confidence thing. We were talking about that last time we were on mm -hmm. the phone and like you've always struck me as someone who is ex very confident. Um, mm -hmm. And you said that that had something to do maybe with like an early mentorship relationship with uh, Kim Sinclair who sort of helped introduce you to lots of folks and show you the ropes early on. Is that accurate? Yeah. I mean, like Kim is such a, like, I don't know if spitfire is the word. She is just like a runaway train. That's the word when it comes to <laughs> meeting people and just being able to like talk to anybody that she like walks in front of. And as a 21, 22 year old person, just trying to like start in the industry having her literally like grab my arm and like pull me around and meet all these people and be like, Hey, this is Dana. She is a musician or like, she's helping me do whatever. Um, was just like such a great opportunity for me to get out of my shell and actually talk to people and learn how to talk to people. <laughs> um, and yeah. And I did like a bunch of radio tracking, which was also, I don't know how my life has come full circle into this. Cause now I'm on the other end of those phone calls, but like, right. yeah, I, I hated radio tracking because I hated having to cold call people and be like, hey, it's Dana from Spin Count. What's up? Do you, are you playing our music? No? Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. So 
uh, yeah, that was definitely like jumping in with both feet into the so many metaphors in this mm. this thing. But I dig yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I uh, before I went to law school, I was an English major. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> hilarious um when you your time working with kim at spin count and then it was golden bay right was your own your yeah own that's my own thing yeah um just like because this is supposed to be like an artist development kind <laughs> of video series <laughs> most of them just chatting right. with friends <laughs> uh, but like what what are some like practical publicity or radio tips that you may have learned through that time with kim or on Ooh. you know on your own doing that work that like an emerging artist could deploy um, I don't know how relevant most of the things are now, but, mm. uh, I learned how to make a one sheet. Yep. I, um, so Kim also hired me or like I started working with her because I had a background in photography right. and I could make one sheets for her. Um, so that was like a whole other thing that like added to my uh, template cause I knew how to use Photoshop and like InDesign and stuff like that Yeah, yeah. It has also very much helped my entire career, <laughs> uh, having another skill. Um, but yeah, like I learned how to do one sheets and like talk to people. And, um, also that like, it's so much work. It's so much admin work. Um, but it's also like really easy if you have the time to do it, which I think like most broke musician should have the time to send your records to all the campus radio stations that right. you possibly can. Um, and, you know, I feel like I've really learned how to do my research on the proper people to send my music to. Um, Cause I think there's like this idea generally when you like start, it's like, I'm just gonna send my music to everybody. Just right. like, like talking about radio tracking, campus radio specifically, because you're like, I'm just going to send it to all the campus radios because they must play all the music. But it's like, well, actually, there's like 10 radio stations, like 10 campus radio stations um, in Canada that actually play indie rock or like folk music right. so that it charts or I'm making that number up. But um, it's, it's probably all, accurate like, for folk yeah. for the folk charts. <laughs> yeah. Um, or whatever, or like maybe you have like a heavy metal group or something like that. There's like three or four stations that have like a heavy metal thing. So yeah. chart, so you like really honing in on those people and making sure that they get your music first and then anybody else um, who requests it or like a DJ that plays your music would be way smarter to send to than the actual campus station because the campus station is just gonna go into the library and yeah. probably no one will see it. But if you send it to the DJ, then the DJ will see it and they will play it and it doesn't actually even need to get into the campus library. That's a, that's a trick for you. That maybe I shouldn't tell you. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, um, my own experience with campus is it's like extremely time consuming to stay on top of in order to be able to do well because of the rotating nature of hosts going through those yeah. universities. It's like students doing one to four year programs yeah. um, that are going to host all those shows. But like, uh hills burns first or their second album i can't recall now but we we managed to get them into the top 10 on the year shot top 50 mm -hmm. nationally because we went through we, we we did send to every station but then we went through and we contacted all of the relevant hosts at each of the yeah. stations individually and at the time we had jsr and we spent some ad dollars at nice. all of the <laughs> most nice. relevant stations which I mean, there's obviously no direct correlation between that and plays, but like if the hosts are having to listen to our ad for 30 seconds, I'm you know, thir 30 times a day and we're giving away vinyl and you're giving away CDs at a couple of stations, it's like, it all helps and it's way more accessible than commercial, even CBC, which is like, oh yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's the exact same, like that model is the commercial radio model also. That's like right. what... Drake is doing to get his song number one on yeah. <laughs> commercial radio is they're buying ads to like promote his next record and yeah. then in that they're like well we'll also play that like they don't say that but that's the reality yeah it, it just like, costs a little more than campus yeah. radio <laughs> oh yeah it's whatever a hundred thousand dollars or five yeah. million, I have no idea commercial radio is insane <laughs> yeah but yeah 
Yeah, speaking of like pay to play stuff, I won't name the band or the platform, but we ran a $5,000 ad campaign on one of the streaming platforms for an album release mm -hmm. and then just happened to get a bunch of playlist ads. It's oh, like, wow. I think that stuff mm -hmm. happens. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, they want those ad dollars. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's yeah. what, uh, that's what moves the market. Do <laughs> you want to talk about markets? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been on Google Finance today, so not up to date. Um, what's been going on with the key change initiative stuff lately? I mean, most of that was based around actually traveling to international events, right? Yeah, so I went to Sweden in February, um, which was awesome. It was really cool. Uh, the key change initiative was... Uh, that was like our first meetup and then we were all supposed to meet again in Reaper Bond, um, yeah. after playing at the Liverpool Sound City in May, which obviously didn't happen. Um, but I have like, they have confirmed that they're just going to like move our program basically into the next year or the year oh, okay. after, depending on what happens. So we received a bursary, um, I think it's about six thousand dollars Canadian, uh, maybe a little bit more, yeah. um, to pay for like flights and accommodations and um, uh, per diems, a couple other things, and that was yeah. Basically, it's supposed to like take us to these two different. It's supposed to take me to three conferences and the band to one okay. to play the Liverpool Sound City and then. Factor and SoCam Foundation also were going to top off, top cool. up everything, so it would have been like completely paid for. We just like would have been reimbursed. Yeah. Um, so I'm not really sure how that is working, but yeah. Uh, yeah, and it, you know, right now everything has kind of moved online. We've done like a couple sessions. They have like, um, they're really great. Like they have like a mom, like a like a mother's group because there's a couple of moms in the group cool. and they like get together and talk about being a mom and musician at the same time and the like I don't know, complications with that or uh, I don't know what happened how you're a mom and a musician at the same time so I, I yeah. don't have that experience um, but and yeah it's very like it's a very cool group of people women um that kind of are all supporting each other so mm. i know that if i have like a new project or if i have something i can like message our like group chat and be like hey i have this like new thing and i'll like people will go and listen to it cool. which is kind of cool um yeah it's a great it's a great initiative i mean i think like they definitely have some work to do around the realities of gender equality because I think that that conversation has definitely changed. Right. Um, but how how has it changed? What do you mean? Well, just because the like ask now isn't um, like gender parity. It's not just like men and women. There are right. non-binary and like the gender spectrum of people. Sure. Um, which I don't really know how I fit into that conversation and how I can have a like, constructive conversation about that because I don't know enough about it. Right. Um, but it's something that I'm definitely like going to look more into because I, I don't know, I believe that. And I, I think that like equality and equity um, in the music industry is like super important. And I'm, I don't, I don't know. I don't think yeah. that like saying 50, 50 is the, the end all be all for me. So no. it's just like more representation and diversity in general would be really great. It yeah, well, and like one very easy way, like even if it was 50 50, is everyone being paid the yeah. same way? <laughs> you know, uh, are we getting yeah. the same accommodations, riders? I mean, it, yeah. it, it's deeper than that, but it needs to be that, but more. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the music industry is great. <laughs> Yeah, you know, in some ways it is, though, because I feel like these conversations happen more, they, they happen in front of issues mm -hmm. in the music industry. Like, I feel like we're talking about this now, and there are other industries that are going to lag. Yeah. Um, 
I think the creative industries, though we obviously are still very far behind on a lot of fronts, often lead these conversations, mm -hmm. which is a strength of the industry. And it's because of the people who end up, I think, working as artists and, you know, creative professionals. Definitely, yeah. Um, have you come up? I know, I mean, we've talked about this, but how, how have you come up against this, like, fronting a rock band? Uh, like sexism in the music industry? <laughs> well, yeah, band? sure. Se <laughs> yeah, I mean, or, I'm thinking about a specific example where we've talked about like festival sort of opportunities mm -hmm. and that sort of stuff. Like, yeah, have, have there, what sort of barriers have there been for um, you that you've like, that have been blatant that way? Uh, if you're comfortable I mean, talking about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, like, Again, I feel like I, I feel like I have gotten a name for myself as being an aggressive, angry woman um, in the local music industry. And I think that um, I maybe have lost opportunities or people don't come to us for opportunities because right. of that. Um, because they either see me as like being too confrontational, um, or they see us as like not fitting their bill, um, mm. or they already have a woman, like a female fronted rock band playing their festival. And so they right. don't want us, they don't like care about having a second one for whatever reason. Um, yeah. Tokenistic approach. Yeah. I mean, like Nova Scotia is getting better but it's definitely not great as i don't know if you're following the ecma situation right now but it's not from, from afar from <laughs> from over here yeah it's just so like i don't even know how to have these i don't even know how to have a conversation anymore because i just like, i like don't i don't care anymore i'm like if you don't want to hire us and that's the only reason why you don't want to hire us or if that's what you tell me the reason is then i right. don't care about your festival anymore like yeah. you are not worth my energy and i think maybe that's how i've like matured over the last couple of years is because before i think i definitely would have got very angry but i learned that there are different approaches to getting your way <laughs> in this industry sure and sometimes being quiet and um, moving up the, the ladder in whatever sense you want to take that is a, a better way to do things than to just yell at people from the bottom rung. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I don't necessarily believe that either, but, you know. Yeah, it's... There's just so many problems <laughs> all from the, from the bottom up. And it's like, they present in different ways. I think like having all of those male winners at the ECMAs is like <laughs> uh, short. It's a problem in and of itself. And what it represents is that there are more problems every, every layer on the way up to that. Where yeah, people aren't disappointing what I and I mean like we don't need to get too political about this but it's very disappointing when the president of the board of the ECMAs has a like statement to a news outlet that says like well I mean this is the number of people that applied so we can't possibly do anything more it's like that should never ever be the conversation and like full disclosure Music Nova Scotia does the exact has done the exact same thing in the past and like I have been in those rooms and been like that's not the conversation we're having here we obviously are the issue like we're the problem how do we mm -hmm. fix this problem we fix this problem by getting into those communities and engaging with people and being yeah. a like better representation and like a better rep for these like people that are doing music in our industry that we just are like ignoring for whatever reason like I just I, I got kind of like heated yesterday and I'm in a conversation about this and I just like I'm just tired I'm like so frustrated that we're even having this conversation like not you and I but yeah, that, yeah. No, no, sure. like the industry is having this conversation in the Maritimes because it makes us look so backwards and so outdated mm. it's like you ECMAs are nationally known they're well like much more 
well known than Music Week, like Nova Scotia Music Week or PEI Music Week or whatever, but all of those individual Mias are ultimately doing a better job at being representative of their individual music industries than the ECMAs. And like, I just, so there's something wrong with the organization. There's not something wrong with all of the people surrounding the organization that doesn't like, that can't be the conversation that we're right. having when it yeah. comes to that. That's, that's my piece on that. <laughs> <laughs> it's so annoying. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's I, okay. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I have lots of talks with lots of people about this over <laughs> yeah. the last couple of days. I have my own ideas about, um, you know, how I, you know, how I can operate mm -hmm. to help make a th the whole thing better. The, in, you know, the industry in Atlantic Canada. And that, I mean, that's been a nice part about what's happened through COVID for me is it's been like a moment of pause and reflection to say like, <laughs> here's where I've been failing personally and professionally. Mm -hmm. And how do I do better? Yeah. Um, yeah. And trying to actually take some of those concrete steps behind the scenes now that might, you know, end up being a little more public soon, but, um, yeah. well, I mean, sorry, my voice just cracked. Um, I like, I've had this conversation about like gender parity, I don't know, four years ago now with other upper level management in Nova Scotia about other upper level like managers in Nova Scotia and they basically were like well you can't pick who you manage and I I don't disagree with that a hundred percent and I like right. I don't think that like management companies that have all white dudes on their bill have to all of a sudden go out and like pick up the first woman that they find but yeah. I think that like the opportunity is there for them to start paying attention to women and like mm. trying to invest either energy or time. It doesn't necessarily need to be money because like management is difficult. It's a lot of investment in people and you can't just like throw hundreds of thousand dollars down the drain for the sake of like gender diversity. Um, I don't think you have to though, right? I mean, no, it's like, you don't have to. That's, that, that's that development. I mean, you don't have to throw money away. It's like, you can still, you can find the right projects and invest Absolutely. in the right way where it's like, these yeah. are viable artistic and business projects and entities. Um, yeah. And I guess that's kind of like the issue is that people aren't spending the time looking for, looking for those projects because like, if you are a straight white male your friends are probably like straight white males and you're only looking at that circle yeah so like sorry i'm laughing because it's like yeah that's my life yeah but i mean like it's the same yeah. with me and you yeah. have to like actively mm -hmm. like i when i booked idow the very first year i booked idow i booked an entirely white lineup of people and i like got called out for that and i was like fuck you're right like holy shit i'm an idiot yeah. and then the next year i like worked harder to look outside of my own circle of friends and my own like understanding of music and found like more diversity in who yeah. I was bringing as because I think that that was my role as a programmer as like a festival bringing music to my audience basically and I don't think enough people think like that and I don't think enough people work hard enough to try to like recognize other people um and then just sort of like brush it off as like, well, they weren't directly in front of me, so I don't know. And it's just like, well. Right. Yeah, there's a laziness to it. I mean, that's that's somewhere where I have where I have more work to do is like I, I end up working with artists who I have like relationships and friendships with anyway. Yeah. Um and it's and I've and I've been doing more like cold outreach now to artists who I'm interested in working with who I might not know. And that is so it's so much harder. Absolutely. Because uh, I, I have mean, Sorry, no, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, because then I, there's this like, because I'm, you know, I'm a small independent company person. And if you don't already have a sense of who I am, I'm having to like justify and prove myself. Yeah. And that's tough because I'm like, it's not, A, I don't want to do it because yeah. I don't, not that I don't want to have to prove myself, but I don't, I, uh, it's like a humility thing maybe, or like, mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. No, I'm not that humble. It can't be humility. 
<laughs> well, I mean, it's difficult too because you're reaching out to people that you don't know and expecting them to like, like if a random person messaged me and was just like, hey, and like, do you, I could be your manager or like, I like, I'll give you a deal on something. I'd be like, who the no. fuck are you? Absolutely yeah. not. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's like, there's trust that needs to be built. There's like relationships that need to be built. That is all, it all takes time. Yeah. It's just also takes a little bit like a little bit more effort to put in the time and like in a year or two years you won't be having these conversations because you will have hopefully ideally built a relationship with more people who yeah. then can be like no you're like you're cool this person's cool Everything's you're fine, fine. you're fine yeah. <laughs> and like honestly like i think women i can only speak for like white women but like women do that um I've had those conversations with a lot of people about men and people being like, Hey, this guy kind of like asked me to do this thing. And I'd be like, yeah, no, they're great. Or like, uh, I don't know about them or this has been my experience with this person. Um, right. and it like, I'm sure that happens in all communities of people. Yeah. And it just, yeah, that's the way, I don't know. That's the way things go. Your something. reputation is important. Key takeaway. <laughs> don't be an asshole. <laughs> But it's hard not to be an asshole. It's general disposition. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Um, maybe let's jump into um, Megan Nash. Mm -hmm. I feel like Megan Nash has been an important relationship for you through your like development as an artist, and you've done a whole bunch of things together. How did that like first point of connection happen with her? Um, I worked at a um, music venue in Halifax called The Company House. Um, I worked there for five years and she came through from Saskatchewan playing guitar with a, another artist and I basically like, um, <laughs> I basically just like stopped in my tracks and I was just like, holy shit, like this person can sing and write a song and okay. <laughs> um cool and then I got really giddy and we went to Charlie's when the bar when company house closed I closed up we went up to Charlie's and had a beer and I basically was like hey um you're really great do you maybe we could like play music together sometime or something I don't, I don't know. she tells yeah. it as I like was super cool and came over and like with the comb out of my pocket and like comb out of my back. I didn't do like any Like the of grease that. in your hair? Yeah. And she was like, you came over, you were so cool and I was scared of you. And I was like, we are dumb. Um, but yeah, then when I did my first uh, solo YOLO tour, uh, when I bought a car and drove across the country to nice. play five shows, uh, <laughs> like, um, I was somewhere in northern Ontario and was like hey I'm coming through out west and I'm kind of looking for a couple of places to play do you know of any spots and hey she, I'm on tour do you have any shows for me <laughs> basically like um I was like you know if you want to hang out or whatever uh, I'm coming through yeah. and she was like yeah like Nick Faye and I are on tour right now nice. we're playing in Lethbridge you should come down well you can open for us so I was like okay great so I came down I was so nervous and scared to meet new people and you know, we hung out, we played like a great show, made a little bit of money. And then um, my birthday, I was traveling over my birthday and I was in Banff and I like messaged them. I was like, hey, like my sister got me a hotel in Banff. If you guys are like in the area, and want to come hang out. And so <laughs> they came and hung out with, with me and we like hung out in the hot tub and had a little like picnic. And it was, nice. it was really, it was a great experience. And then, yeah. The next year sorry that was a lot of rambling um yeah the next year we like booked an actual tour and i spent like two months with her um we played i don't know 40 shows or something like that and we've like we've been pretty lucky over the years this is like the longest we've not seen each other in person it's been a yeah. year and it's very upsetting <laughs> um but we've been super lucky we like played the great escape together and she came uh, on tour to do like she played Focus Whales and the Great Escape and then we went to Talon together which was like yeah. a big stroke of luck that happened and she is one of like the most interesting and creative people I think I've ever met and spending time with her makes me feel like a more creative and well-rounded human yeah um, 
because she is like all of the airy floaty things that I am not and I am all of the grounded things that she is not right. so <laughs> we, when we get together we're very like we hold each other to a different level that's a interesting. Lot of times. It's interesting. I'm imagining uh, Megan floating and you here, <laughs> and it's almost like she she helps you float and you help her maybe be tethered a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think that's what she would probably say too. <laughs> yeah, I I mean I like I'm from an outsider looking in that relationship is very cool and it's like I think that's how you you make it work as an Atlantic Canadian artist is like having real friends yeah. across the country that you can tour with and open for and have open for you and do this sort of reciprocal performance thing like with Hillsburn starting to book them early on like that was how we made a lot of shows happen we were lucky enough to uh do a show with Sky Wallace in Toronto yeah. and um Sky's another amazing person who like yeah. basically booked our entire she just like gave me all of her contacts and was like, here are all my contacts for Ontario. And I was like, you didn't have to do that, but thank you. That's <laughs> like, awesome. And then just like helped us book our last Ontario tour pretty much. She's so nice and like just a, just a great performer. And has been killing it over the <laughs> yeah. last year or two. I feel like it was like the big booking agent, the big label. Oh yeah. She kills it. Um, her manager is also in, um, a part of what's it called key change part of key change oh right on is that savannah yeah savannah yeah cool yeah. tiny kingdom yeah shout out to tiny kingdom <laughs> did they they just launched a label right i think so yeah yeah cool well um tana i feel like i've we talked kept... a lot i'm sorry <laughs> no that's okay <laughs> um oh so many i mean yeah okay uh, two last questions okay. one one serious one and then one silly one okay um and a serious positive one what makes you happiest in music or working in the music business Ooh, um what makes me happiest i think as a musician what makes me happiest is like performing is getting mm -hmm. to be on stage as an industry person um getting to help other people succeed makes mm. me very happy um yeah, which is why I like I'm really excited about this board position because I get to like actually do move things in a positive direction and like help people reach their potential, which is really cool. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, I've been thinking more about my own role lately as like wanting to be a connector. Mm -hmm. I watched uh, I've been watching probably too many like Netflix documentaries about music during the pandemic, but I watched nice. one about Clarence Avon. Okay. I think it's called The Black Godfather. Okay. Anyway, Clarence was just this, like, person who knew and connected everybody all the way up from, like, uh, Bill Withers, Michael Jackson, like, NBA players. Wow. P. Diddy, like, <clears throat> crazy, crazy connected. Like, I, I don't even know if you call him a manager or a talent agent. He was just, like, a deal maker kind of person. Right. Okay, yeah. And I like that idea of putting people together with the right people to make something better than the some of their parts mm -hmm. um anyway that's that's one of my favorite things too is like helping people accomplish the things that they want to accomplish yeah when i like think back of all the people that i've um like helped at nova scotia music week just as like their conference coordinator um and like helping do one-on-ones and stuff like that and then i hear like conversations that they're like yeah I talked to this person and we've been talking and it's been two years and we're like nice. starting to do deals or whatever I'm just like thank god like thank god yeah <laughs> I just it makes my heart warm <laughs> that yeah. you potentially get to do the thing that you want to do with your life that's so exciting which is so difficult to try to do to begin yeah. with it's like yeah any glimmer of hope I think that you can provide to someone is like nice yeah in it's the music cool. biz it's not all cutthroat <laughs> no <laughs> not like when i was in law school and people were like tearing pages out of books in the library so you couldn't finish your assignments and shit that was, <laughs> that was seriously cutthroat stealing stealing your books man that's so funny it's tough <laughs> uh okay last oh. question silly one or as silly as you want it to be i guess um okay. if you could have a zoom call okay. <laughs> with any living artist or creator 
who would it be and why? Someone who's living? Um, yeah, living. So that if they watch this, they'll feel nice. <laughs> Should it be someone not famous? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, I have a Zoom call with any living artist or creator. I like, I don't know the answer to that question. I, I have been thinking, I've literally been thinking about this all day. Yeah. And I knew that I wasn't going to have an answer because I was like, I don't know. Um, all I can think of right now is like Beyonce. Um, that's, that's fair. Which is like, like high level. But I just think that she's amazing. Um, on so, no, you know what? I take that back. I'm going to go with someone who is a little more accessible. And that is Lizzo. And that is Ooh. because I have been paying attention to Lizzo since before... She was famous. She had wow. like 40,000 followers on Instagram at when I started following her and paying attention to her music. And I just like watching her be herself and be unapologetically herself has like been so inspiring as like a woman and um, a performer. And just like, yeah, seeing where she started and where she's at now, I like every time she does something interesting, I feel like I'm about to cry because I'm like, she was so, like, she was, she wasn't doing anything, like, four years ago. Yeah. And now she's doing something and it's fucking She's awesome. doing a lot. <laughs> she's doing, doing, she, like, won a Grammy. It's like, holy yeah. shit. Have, um, yeah. Have you heard her song, uh, Tempo with Missy Elliott? Yeah. Have I, I heard that song, song so I like, it's like the only record I bought in the last, like, four years. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I I was doing some DJ gigs here briefly in uh, Cornerbrook, Newfoundland before all this pandemic <laughs> stuff hit, and I, I wore, that, that wore that one out. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. There's like a little Lizzo, um, like, oh, like prayer candle. candle? Yeah, yeah, prayer candle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, but I've got a cool new light thing going on. Oh, here. weird. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's like, I, I needed to get my like office home studio a little more vibey, so. That's fair, yeah. Cool. All right. Sweet. Well, thanks so much for making the time to chat, Dana. <laughs> no worries. Anytime. Um, and thank you to Music Canal, the province of Anel Coa, for sponsoring the video series. Let's see. And uh, I'll end the recording, Dana, and then we can jump off and have an informal goodbye. Okay. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye.